So here are some English kinship terms. As with everything in English, this is not official because there is no official governing body which could proclaim it as such. This is just what I've put together based on Old English, Middle English, and Modern English. So in the center, there is you, and you have a father and a mother. Your uh, grandfather and grandmother are your eld father and eld mother. These terms can also refer to distant ancestors. A great-great-grandfather would be an eld father as well. I don't know how we would designate him as a great-great-grandfather as opposed to a great-great-great-great-grandfather. Uh, someone else could come up with something for that. Uh, moving on. Your uncle is your Eam, and your aunt is your Madri. Now, in Old English, there was a term for a paternal uncle, maternal uncle, paternal aunt, and maternal aunt, but in Middle English, only two of these terms survived, and then they took over the roles of the previous words which existed and then died. So, yeah, Eam and Madri now can refer to maternal or paternal. Um, of course, you have brothers and sisters. The uh, child of one of your siblings, or the, uh, the a male child of one of your siblings, is a Neve, and a female child is a Nift. And these terms can also double as grandchildren terms, so a grandson can be a Neve, and a granddaughter can be a Nift. Of course, there are sons and daughters. If your son marries a woman, then she is your snore, and if your daughter marries a man, he is your odham. And uh, everyone's, of course, familiar with wife, but where is um, a little bit less known. This is the same where as in werewolf. In Old English, where and wife could mean uh, man and woman, and they could also mean husband and wife, and they could also be used as adjectives if you were to modify them, so they could refer to male and female. Uh, the reason why I didn't use husband is because that seems to be a Norse loan that picked up popularity later on in the medieval period, I think around, like, I don't know, the 1200s or something. So I went with the more English, the more native term. Um, the father of your spouse is your swear, and the mother of your spouse is your swear. I didn't find very good terms for cousins, but one thing I did find is the term madri son in Middle English, and this term could be used to uh, could be used as an analogy to create all the other cousin terms. So you could say madri son, madri daughter. And then on the other hand, you could say Eam son and Eam daughter. So if you have a female cousin who is born to an uncle, you could call her your Eam daughter. The prefix step is already English, so we don't need to find an English equivalent. Um, the in-law, it's not really a suffix. It's kind of a suffix. Anyways, the uh, in-law uh, pseudo-suffix that is arguably English. I think it's from Norse, but uh, I don't see why you wouldn't bother using it for terms like um, madri-in-law, if you have an aunt-in-law, or sister-in-law. Um, Old English had more stuff to it. There's a lot of weird things, like uh, I think madri could also be used to refer to a female cousin, and then swear could be used to refer to a, uh, a male cousin on your father's side, it, it gets really weird and complex, but I wanted to just present a, uh, a simplified, uh, I don't know, a layout that would be easy for any modern person to pick up, and which does away with all the uncles and the aunts and the nieces and the nephews.